every event, every day. Hammer, McCallum, Skinner, Scott, and Kelly. More resources on the ground. More late-breaking reports. Always fair and balanced. That's why Fox is the number one name in news, period. By the millions, supporters of the Tea Party movement have warned the politicians to change their tax spend and bailout ways. But the big government politicians ignored us. So now, it's time to vote them out. The Just Tea Party Express out. is in back, and we're going to vote these going. failed politicians out. out of office. In Join us at TeaPartyExpress.org. Our country deserves better pack. TeaPartyExpress.org is responsible for the content of this ad. Tano and David uh, Buckner, and I just wanted to show you a couple of things. These guys are coming on tour with me um, in a couple of cities. We're doing the American Revival, and we're having these kinds of discussions on it. It's going to be really, um, it's a revival. It's going to make, it's inspirational. What I hold here is the first Bible written in English, printed, printed in printed English, English. Um, from the United States. And how many of these are in existence? They they printed 10,000 of them in 1782, and there's 22 left in private hands today. 22. My gosh. Worth a lot of money? Worth a lot of money. Yeah. Worth a lot of money. Uh, it's right here. What does it say right here on the second page? I don't know if you can grab this, but right here, what is it? The, the quote, it, it, this Bible, by the way, was done by Congress, mm -hmm. and it says, Resolved the United States and Congress assembled recommend this edition of the Bible to the inhabitants of the United States. Uh -huh. So right here, the first Bible written, uh, printed in English was printed, can you please hold this because I'm afraid the whole thing's going to fall apart, printed um, by Congress, by Congress. Can you imagine getting that? Let, let, me, let me goof this up even, even more yeah. because the official records of this Bible being printed said that this Bible was, quote, a neat edition of the Holy Scriptures for the use of our schools, end quote. <laughs> So, uh, and this is really interesting. This is an original document from Thomas Jefferson. And here it is. This was uh, on the 24th day in the year of our Lord Christ, yeah. 1807, signed by Thomas Jefferson. The significance of this. Article 7 of the Constitution, the founders said in the year of our Lord that they had done the Constitution, but Jefferson added in the year of our Lord Christ. But everyone will tell you that he didn't believe in. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, um, I think America is at a crossroads. Um, uh, it is at a place financially that it's not going to last. Is this, if they pass this, Judge, the way they do underhandedly and everything else, are we even close to a constitutional crisis? Is this a constitutional crisis? What? This feels really Remember bad. Remember we talked on your show not too long ago, if zero is where the Constitution was when they gave us the country and 180 is the opposite of that, where are we now? And I said 150 and you said, wow, do you think things are that bad? Things are that bad. Because if they can get away with this, it will be a precedent for them to change other basic American values yeah. without actually reading it and without actually voting on it. Where do we go from here? You know, we, we have to, I think, get back to some fundamentals, and I'll start with faith. Because in our Declaration of Independence, 234 years we've had that. No other government's come close to that. We have 45 words that are set forth that set the entire philosophy of American government. We, we encapsulate that. We set it forth in the Declaration and capture it in the Constitution. Those 45 words, and by the way, this is, you were talking about the Texas history standards. This is one of the cool things we've got done is every student in Texas now will recite these 45 words every year. They will learn the philosophy of government. All men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with rights. Government exists to protect God-given rights. And below that, you have the consent of the governed. So it starts with rights come from God. And if you don't have that recognition that rights come from God, then they have to come from, from government. Somebody. And if they come from government, government will regulate them. Would you, would you agree? Because here we are, different religions. Um, and I, I was just speaking this weekend someplace. I was in uh, Missouri, and I was speaking at a pro-life event. And um, a, a majority of them were Catholic there. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, the time of theology right now has passed. The time for us to go back and forth, and you can believe what you believe, and I can believe, and you can believe something different. That's almost irrelevant right now. It is people of faith that understand that that one concept, you must destroy God because if you have an understanding that your rights come from God, everything changes. If you That's lose right. that, and us as faith, judge, do you believe that that religion as we know it, faith as we know it, is in dire, dire trouble. 
of course it's in dire trouble because the government will assault it. You just played a tape of Senator Charles Schumer from New York who didn't know he was being taped. He was basically saying, we can change anything we want. Never mind that rights come from God yeah. and through our humanity. Never mind that the Declaration of Independence is the law of the land like the Constitution. Yeah. Don't let anybody hear you say this, but we can change whatever we want. That's devastating. Back in just a second. with David Barton, Judge Andrew Napolitano, and David Buckner. We're talking about um, health care and this Congress and the direction of the United States of America. And David, we were just talking in the break about you, your piece is hope, the truth, of the economy and, and what this means if they pass it. See, the fact of the matter is the law, the economic principles that are unavoidable, if you do this, this will it occur. They're not talking about that. They're not talking about adding 31 million more people without any new doctors. They talk about it's immoral to ration, it's immoral to not have people have a right, health care is a right. They're not talking about the facts. And the beauty of my dialogue and my con contribution is the fact that the facts stand on their own. Nobody's talking about it. I believe there's a reason. I believe that they don't want to address the truth. Okay, so you're saying that um, uh, that is a that is a natural law. It's a but natural law. Isn't that the basis of all of our documents, the founders? Absolutely. Nature's Absolutely. God and nature's law. When they wrote the Declaration of Independence and when they wrote the Constitution, <clears throat> they wedded America to the idea, to the belief of the natural law that our rights come from our humanity, which is a gift from God. The people that run the government today don't believe that. They believe that our rights come from but the government. it doesn't government. matter, but if you're talking about natural law, that was, if I'm not mistaken, that was carefully crafted yes. language. Nature's laws and nature's God. That's right. Meaning it's not about a church. It, yeah. These are immovable That's laws. Right. So just as the economy is, the law is as well. And the laws of nature are that our rights come from our humanity. So if you, if you lose that, what happens? You lose that, you lose government. Inside the Jefferson Memorial is one of the greatest quotes of all time given by Jefferson, came out of the first book he wrote, and he said, can the liberties of a nation be thought secure if we remove their only firm basis, which is a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God and they're not to be violated but with His wrath. You lose your conviction that our liberties come from God, you'll lose your liberties. That's why John Adams, as president, said, our Constitution is made only for a moral and a religious people. You lose that underpinning convictions, the document doesn't work, you lose your rights, you lose your freedoms, it's gone. And then there's no right and no wrong, and the government can right. do whatever yeah, it has the whatever. power to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If they skip one, they don't have to address the other. And if they don't have to address the other, they will never get to the third. America, now you know why I'm doing this uh, uh, roadshow called The American Revival. Because if you want to revive America, you have to be an evangelist for faith, hope, and charity. You have to know inside of you. Not just kind of a cursory, oh, I go to church on Sunday or whatever. It doesn't matter. You have to know deep inside of you faith, hope, and charity. Where do those come from? And how do they connect to you? That's the only way to save this country. Faith, hope, and charity come from God directly to you, and it will give you the spine to stand. Final thoughts next. Sometimes you have only one opportunity to insure your assets before disaster strikes. <laughs> that was a funny episode. Uh, join us on, uh, on Friday. Um, I want to thank my, uh, my guests. Uh, they have, there are three books that are out that you need to read. If you've not read any of the, these gentlemen, their work, they are phenomenal, and you need to educate yourself on these ideas and so many more that they bring to the table with us uh, all the time. I appreciate your time, gentlemen, and we will see you again on my way now to Broadway, to the theater, where I'm going to be doing a uh, live broadcast on stage at the Nokia. You can find out all the information at glennbeck.com. We'll see you tomorrow from New York. Good night.